choose all four with the same background, the same knowledge, right? I would always look and ensure that each are bringing a different type of skill so that when the four come together, I have a powerful atomic bomb as opposed to if I take four with the same knowledge base, same skills, I'm only coming in with a little bit again. <laughs> All right, but I don't want to come in with the BBA. Now, what does Parliament do? We make laws. We make laws. All right? Under the Constitution, Article 52, Subsection 1, allows us to make laws. We make laws, why? We want to ensure that we have laws that will ensure peace and tranquility in the country. We want to make laws that ensure good and proper governance. And we want to make laws to ensure that in this changing environment, in this changing environment that we see today, that the laws are changed or amended to keep up with the changing environment. Because if we don't keep up, we become obsolete. You don't expect the law of 1780 to be, be applicable in 2013. Some aspect of it may be applicable, but you must have amendments and sometimes complete um, change, uh, complete change altogether. All right. So these are what we do. So essentially, you really want to ensure that your laws will continuously improve the quality of life of your people. All right. So that the individual in Bain and Grand Stephan has the same opportunity in terms of quality of life as the individual in the or whatever. That is what the government's responsibility is. The government is to ensure that there's absolutely no discrimination in quality of life. Everybody has the same opportunity to become whatever he or she has the um, knowledge to become. At least give them that opportunity. That's the government's responsibility. And Parliament must, must ensure that. Example, the environment. You know that there are a lot of environmental issues, and therefore you must ensure that your laws keep up with the environmental changes so as to protect the environment. Because if you don't, the quality of life of your people will deteriorate. Right? The entire thing with the oil exploration that we're talking about today. Um, you would hear the government saying, go ahead, they're going to drill and whatever else. We're saying we have a problem, all right? We're not saying don't drill. We're not telling you that. We're saying, listen, man, you cannot drill without proper law and proper regulations. Because you drill and they hit something and oil comes down, whatever, 75% of my employment depends on tourism. Either direct or indirect. Tourism, marine life, sea, hotels, all of them, the environment plays an important part. All I'm saying is protect it. Protect it. All right? Don't be penny wise and pound food. Yes, you go dig there, and yes, today you may come up and can infuse six billion dollars in the mini coin. I'm just giving a fact. You can use six billion dollars. For the man who wants a quick fix, that is good. Because suddenly the Bahamas has six billion dollars. But all I'm saying is, listen, I'm going to be gone. You're going to be gone. All of you are going to be gone. At least give your children and your grandchildren a fair shake. I won't know what happened after because I'm gone. If I destroy the environment, the marine life, the seabed, you're going to have tourism going to zero, all right? No ships come through anymore. Your water bed is destroyed. Your marine life destroyed, all right? Your whole water table destroyed. Everything gone. I would have left behind a complete disaster for my children and my grandchildren. But while I was here, I was quite happy because I was privy to six billion dollars. So I did not have a problem. So all I'm saying is, Let's look at it futuristically. You cannot just look at it today. All right? And that's our argument. The laws, the 
regulations, everything must be in place. So that once anything happens, you know how to deal with it. And not only that, besides having those in place, you must have educational process or programs and education dissemination so that you and others know exactly what is happening. So that you know what are the pros, what are the cons. The behemoth public must know. So that if you're gonna ask them to make a decision, they can make an educated decision. But don't come and tell a man that they listen, I'm gonna give you $6 billion tomorrow without him knowing how that's coming about and what are the after effects. Yes, he will say yes. At $6 billion, the average person will say yes, let's go for it. But he don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. All I'm saying and all I'm saying is, let us look at what are the after effects to ensure that our future generation is protected so that the Bahamas can move on. So, so you can see that laws have to change, and laws are amended and changed constantly to ensure that these things happen. We also make bills, right? So we make laws by passing bills, right? What a bill is, a bill essentially is basically a draft proposal, a draft proposal of a law that would be brought to Parliament, and we would discuss it before it becomes law. So it's a building issue. There are different types of bills. There's what you call a public bill. A public bill would be one that would benefit the entire public, the entire lives. All right? So you've made this bill to the advantage and to improve the quality of life for all that's public. A perfect example of that was in 1992, when the FNM first came in. We brought in the Broadcast Act, amendment to the Broadcast Act, so that, because previous to 1992, there was one station, ZNS, and the government has always had a monopoly. If we as opposition wanted to speak to you on the radio station, we had to go to Miami and talk on Miami's radio station to talk to you. Because the government did not allow us to speak in our own country to you. All right? If we wanted to say something to you on TV, we could not appear on our TV because the government blocked that. This was overt dictatorship or monopoly. We were not allowed. We felt that this was unfair. And therefore, in 1992, when we came in, we brought in the Broadcast Act to free up the, the airwaves so that every behavior will have an opportunity to call in on radio talk shows and can express his voice. All right? We freed it up so that the monopoly by ZNS was broken, so that other individuals, other radio stations, can enter, and that's democracy. That's free enterprise. So previous to nine, so you can see where you would have needed that bill to become law so that you would not have the problem if you wanted to speak to anybody, you have to go to Miami because your own country prevents you from talking to your own people within your own country. So 1992, we brought that, that um, law for, forward. I was also informed that when we were going through the whole process of independence. We fought against a particular issue in the independence discussion. Because there were some outside of us, there were some who felt that if an individual who lived in Abaco, or who lived in Inagua, or who lived in Andres, wanted to travel to another island, he had, that he had to have a special type of travel document. We fought against that because we did not feel that was right. This is one Bahamas and we should be able to move so But I won't go into that at this time. But that was an independence issue. Then there's the, what you call the private bill. The private bill, that is a private entity who wants to have a law framed especially for their benefit because they feel that they're being taken advantage of. 